Hi everybody, this is Ugmog of Through the Palantir. This is a video of me versus a warden, and it's what I hope to be the first of many videos, kind of like it, where I'm going to talk about base PvP. Okay, so here we start off in the middle of the entire fight, because I was a little slow in getting the frames to go off. Uh, right here I deployed the Banner of Terror, this is very important for me, I'm going to stand the opening stages of the entire fight as it cuts down my opponent's damage and also eats into their regeneration rates, which is great for my amount of power, which is important for a war to fight. Alright, starting this fight off, as you can see, I'm in commander's stance with the art of protection. Basically, I'm healing as good as I possibly can, and I've got as much survivability as I can stack. Right here, I'm throwing up the command post. That's an extra 1% mitigation and more importantly, a lot of extra regeneration rates, plus a little bit of a damage boost. Not much. So I've got the command post up, I've got the banner of terror down, banner of terror is only going to last for one minute, but that's just going to let me stay up here. Alright, if you notice, the buffs that we're stacking, Dirk has the regeneration buff, which only helps him out of combat, so that's really not affecting the fight. And he's got trail food and regular food. I have got regular food, as you can see when it pops up as the bleeds are gone. And so basically we're even there, the trail food gives him a slight advantage in the buffs there, but otherwise things are pretty even. Uh, he's putting up a lot of warden dots and leeches and stuff, and periodically I'm going ahead and peeling those off with my potions as I notice them and decide to take them off. Right, other than that, the fight is going pretty static right now. Basically, I'm just using the double tap technique to make sure that I get my heals through his interruptions. The double tap technique is something that I use a lot. Basically, when I decide I want to do a heal, I will hit the heal button and queue up the same skill two, sometimes three or four times, so that the skill is firing off and then it's the next skill on the list. So if I get interrupted, then the instant that the interrupt goes off, I'm already doing the skill again. Typically, I can be almost halfway done with a quick induction like Crack the Whip before they're even finished with the animation from the interrupt. And since most classes only have one in the world readily available, that works out pretty well. Uh, wardens, however, they've got a lot of interrupts and they can get them off pretty fast when they have a mind to. So, you've got to be a little more prepared for them than you would with any other class besides, say, a champion, since they're the only other guys who have an interrupt anywhere near as fast. That said, the double tab typically works pretty well against even the wardens and champions, and as you can see, my health bar is going up, it's going down, but it's not what you mean for half health right now. But one important thing about using the double tap technique is that you never, ever, ever want to accidentally queue up the quick uh, winning fight two times in a row. That's a 2.5 second induction, and if it's getting interrupted, typically by that time, you crack the whip is on cooldown again, and you only want to use that when crack the whip is on cooldown anyway. Or you or sometimes I'll start quit whining and fight to deliberately pull someone in and get them to waste a lot of power trying to beat on me while the induction is slowly going. And then I'll interrupt it myself and then go on to quit and crack the whip when I need some more health. Uh, the quit whining and fight one, basically, it's just a maybe it'll get off, maybe it won't. But I'm not going to depend on this. The induction is just too long. So you want to get Crack the Whip queued up next. The crack the Whip only has four second cooldown. It's typically back up by the time you are interrupted on the quit winding a fight, and because it's got one second less induction, it gets off a lot more reliably. Also, the healing difference is not so great between the two skills. My Crack the Whip is 1167, as you can see right there. My quit winding a fight is about 1.5k. So. Dirk is starting to get low power levels. I'm about at half health. I decided to go ahead and switch back over into our protection right here. I switched over into command to do some extra damage on him, but I'm having a little bit of trouble in his last stages of his health bar, so I decided I need the extra medication just to survive this. Alright, another thing I'm 
doing that's very important is I'm trying my absolute best to keep Dirk in front of me. This is so I can get my blocks and berries in. If you're not getting those extra avoidances up, particularly against a melee class, then you're really giving away the, the entire fight right there. If you let the guy get your back, you're done. You're not getting auto attacks on them, and they're getting all their attacks through a lot easier since they don't have to go past two different levels of avoidance mitigation. And avoidances are your best mitigations in this game, and actually most games, to be honest. Alright, my health is getting really low right here, but at the same time, he's pretty low on power right now. He's only got 590, I've got about 3000, so I decided I'm just gonna go ahead and kite him right now. And just use crack the whip when I need to, and not just t and not try to take it straight up. Just go ahead. I've done a triple tap there. Get it off. Go back to kite again. And you see right there what happened was he got the interrupt, and then the the, uh, the animation for his ability there had about four different extra attacks, and they all did knockbacks on my induction bar. That is one of the most annoying warning moves that there is available for them, and it's a real pain to deal with. You basically just have to take it when he does that, and there's nothing you can do about it. The only plus side is it's pretty power intensive. As you can see, you fired it off uh, three or four times there, and that ate up the rest of his power. He's down to 160, he can basically do one interrupt, maybe two if he's really conservative, and then he's going to be out until the regen kicks it back up. So now my health bar is going back up, and he really can't do anything to stop it. Uh, this is where I want to be in the fight right now. I want to get my health back up, I want him out of power, and then what's going to happen is I'll let my potions and stuff come off cooldown, and uh, I've got the Banner of Terror already off cooldown. Drop the Banner of Terror after switching back over to full damage mode and getting him to half health. I keep him right above half health because Wardens can do a power return gambit when they get down below half health. So you got to watch that power that health level really carefully. But then drop the Banner of Terror for the minus regen, minus damage, and just go for a burst finish and try to drop them to make itself here. This typically works pretty well for me, especially against shield wardens. Uh, Dirk is a spear with Trey Warden, so that's why he's hitting a lot harder than most of them, and it's giving me some trouble already. Typically I don't end up all the way down at only 1000 health when they're getting low power. Typically I've got a bit more of that. But Dirk is a good player, and as I said, spear traded, so the damage he's got just a little bit. So here we go. I've got my health up most of the way, and I'm starting to put on some pressure. I'm going to bring him down to just about 5,000 health. I'm going to just keep him right there. I don't really want to do the math on the fly in order to figure out exactly where the proper level is for uh, exactly halfway. I just keep it roughly there because the health bars don't have to help. Uh, right here I'm hitting a lag spike because of traps, it will do this to me from fun time. So what I had to do is turn it on and off two different times to get it to un-lag like this. And so it cuts out a little bit of the fight here, but you don't miss anything really important. The one thing that Dirk is doing that's really smart right now is he's not using a lot of power. He's letting everything regenerate. He's already back to another 1000. Most warriors that I fight typically are doing this. Uh, I fought a couple that do this. They're the only guys who have beaten me to at this date since I've worked out my entire war strategy. Uh, not to say that I've had a lot of fights uh, with warriors. <laughs> uh, one other thing to mention is that I have not had any 1v1s recently. I have been on a seven week trip to several other countries and I've been living back about two weeks. So it's been almost nine weeks since I've had any serious 1v1s. I did fight a guardian right before him and tore that guy apart very slowly because that's how guardians for some others go. But this isn't very fast either. But I mean, that's it as far as practice so far. It's one guardian and then jerk. Alright, now I'm switching over into damage on brawlers. I drop the banner of terror, and here I go with my shouts. I got him with the debuff, get with the other one, some good crits there. 
and now is when I make a critical mistake. What I should have done here is I should have pursued. I should have moved the banner. I should have banner walked my command post forward. Uh, he's moved out of the banner of terror, but I decide I'm just going to switch back over and move it because. I'm used to the shield wardens, they don't typically have a whole lot of damage, and I figure, okay, I'll just go ahead and reset the fight. This is a critical mistake, because I forgot he's spirit traded, he hits a lot harder than your average warden does. Now you saw how well he did earlier, and almost got me. Uh, now here he comes again, he's already recovered all the, a lot of the health that he had already lost, he's back over half. I figure, okay, don't let him get the regen. So I bring him under half. Bad move making a lot of mistakes in this section of the fight right now. So I'm back to tanking here. I've got commander stance, I've got protection. And it's working alright right now. But pretty soon here he's gonna start going for a big interrupt chain. And it should be happening about now, yep. Also doing a very good job right now of utilizing his stuns as well as his regular interrupts. It's kind of a, annoying, but fortunately Warden stuns aren't very long in their effect. And I, basically I'm already at full DR to him right now. He's only hit me like three times, but he's not going to stun me more than one second. I said one second is all you need for the interrupt, like you saw just there, and he actually got me during the animation. Which is something that would be quite annoying. You finish off the entire skill, you get interrupted while you're still doing the animation, it doesn't fire. Now, we still got over a thousand power, I've got under a thousand health. I realize that my goose is cooked right now, and it's over. And down I go. Alright. As you can see, Dirk is an excellent opponent, and I certainly can't grudge him the win or anything. He definitely earned it. My problem there was that when I went for the beginning of my burst to try to kill him, I did not fully commit, and that's an error that I made for two reasons. One, I wasn't thinking about the fact that he's spear traded and not shield traded. I Typically I would be able to weather the kind of assault he was putting on, but because he's spear traded and good at it, he just put out a lot more damage than I'm used to taking, or know really how to take at that particular point from a warden, and so he got me there. And at the same time, when you go for the DPS push, you really gotta commit to it and just go for it. If you go in half-hearted or back out after just barely starting, then you've basically just given the entire thing away because you've wasted a bunch of power and accomplished practically nothing. In this case, what I did was I let him regain his power. Uh, he popped his health right back up before my yells had even come off cooldown, so I couldn't have even tried to just let him kite backwards and then hit him again with another folly and go after it. Well, this has been the first one of these. I hope that eventually this has become something more regular that I end up doing where I'm going to come and talk about sort of standard PvMP stuff in 1v1s and possibly small group engagements, and mostly focusing on the war leader just because it's not an easy class to play, and I feel like people can always use whatever resources they can find for it, and I'd certainly be happy to help provide those resources. Alright, well that is all for this time. Ugmonk is out.